Hello, people. Welcome to a discussion about um, vectors, and specifically doing something that we've done already, but in reverse. So to go back and review what we've been doing, uh, we've talked about a problem like this in the left. Uh, it says after traveling 25 meters north, Frank turns left and walks 40 meters west. What's Dave's total displacement? Now, uh, two ways to talk about displacement. The formal definition, change in position. Functionally, what we're asking is how far and in what direction. So I'm going to use a simple sketch of this situation, 25 meters north. I'm going to add to that a 40 meters west vector. And what we're looking for is this. I'm going to call that delta x r. <laughs> delta meaning change, x meaning position, r meaning result. I'm looking for this vector, the resultant change in position, the total displacement. Okay. I can find the magnitude of that by doing um, the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and that is, of course, as everybody knows, is the square root of 22. Forty seven meters. Um, and well, here's a reasonable angle to find. I would say that that angle, by definition, is the inverse tangent of opposite forty over adjacent twenty five. And everybody knows that we're going to get that. Switch the uh, old uh, uh, 40 divided by 25. Uh, 58 degrees. Okay. Any, any questions there? Hopefully, no problem. Now, why did I use tangent and not sine or cosine? Well, um, the only reason I like to use tangent here is because these are given values that I don't have to round. All right. There's nothing wrong with using sine or cosine using the 47, but that's a rounded value. I'd rather not round if, uh, if I don't have to. Okay. So there's you know something we've done um, so far. A groupity 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 groupity. Now, what about doing a similar sort of thing but in reverse? And it says after a while, Francis, that was Frank before, Francis here, get it, opposite, sort of. Francis ends up 82 meters away from her, from, her, from her original location at an angle of 30 degrees north of east. How far? Okay. So that means we can draw this first, we can draw that vector. 82 meters at an angle of 30 degrees north of east. 30 degrees north of east means that's a 30 degree angle. All right, so what we can sort of do is draw draw that. I'll try to make it straight. Let's draw that. Yep. All right, so this is uh, 82 meters. And this, well, it doesn't look like it. And I'm kind of a spaz, so i got to change it to make it look more like 30 degrees. Yeah, <clears throat> what we're looking for is what I'll call delta x east and delta x north. So that red vector really does represent how far east Francis went, and the green vector represents how far north Francis went. All right? Well, we know, remember, that this is a 30 degree angle. So uh, as you hopefully can recognize, we can use some trigonometry since we know hypotenuse and an angle. We can use some trigonometry to find either of the other two sides. 
Um, for example, if we want to find delta x east, what I would say is, well, the, the cosine of 30 degrees is delta x east over 82 meters. Semicolon, therefore, delta x east is 82 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. Seventy-one meters. Okay. And to find uh, delta x north, I would use sine. Delta x north over eighty-two meters. And so therefore, delta x. That's a triangle. Delta. Delta x north is 82 meters times the sine of 30 degrees. Many of you know that the sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.5, so 41 meters. So by traveling, a, we're having a total displacement of 82 meters at an angle of 30 degrees north of east. It means that in total, someone has traveled 71 meters east and 41 meters north. And guess what? If you put 41 and 71 into the Pythagorean theorem, guess what you get for hypotenuse? 82 meters. And if you take the inverse tangent of 41 over 71, guess what you get? 30 degrees. I guarantee it. Okay? So notice we've um, sort of, in this case, started with two vectors and found a result. In this case, we've started with a resultant and found what a couple of vectors are that could have made it up. So that's why what I'm sort of referring to is in reverse. Okay? So the bottom line is, just like we can add two perpendicular vectors to find a resultant, any vector can be broken up into two perpendicular parts. And those parts we call components. Components, fancy name for part. So here's um, the way that at least one of our references denotes it. It says here's a vector A, where vector A represents any old vector quantity. Well, one skill you need to be able to have is to effectively sketch um, the perpendicular components of this vector. Now, there are what I will say is, let's use a kind of typical convention where we use horizontal and vertical as our um, component directions, right? Because there are lots of different per perpendicular vectors that could make up vector A, but only one set of them that fall along some standard horizontal and vertical axes. All right, so you should be able to, if you want to draw the horizontal one effectively, what I do is, you know, you can drop a little dotted line down from the tip of vector A, and then, well, the horizontal component goes as far horizontally as, well, until you get to that dotted line. I call this AX, any old vector's X component. This little thing is just that. Typically, we use that to say, let's make sure we're saying that this quantity is a vector. All right? And if we want to find the vertical component, well, you can drop a, whoops, you can identify a horizontal that goes, you know, to the very top of that vector. And then um, I would draw, well, I made it a touch too long, but don't tell anybody. There's the Y component of any old vector. Now, remember, we can translate, here's me being picky again. We can translate this vector or move it anywhere we want. Oh, boy, that, that this is the yard sale. Um, um, oh boy. One, two, one, two. It was fine. Wasn't it just fine before? Come here. There you go. Fine. We can take this vector and move it anywhere we want, and it's still the same vector. So it's a lot of times convenient to draw this as a right triangle. But what we should, you know, I like to draw it like this also, so, you know, showing that these components can start from the same place that. Um, vector A starts from, but it doesn't matter where we draw these things. So if I draw it like this, the one thing it does do for sure is allow us maybe an easier time to use trigonometry to write an expression for how big components AX and AY are.
All right, so I'm just going to go back and say, if we define that to be an angle theta, we can write a general expression for the magnitude of um, each of this vector's components um, using sine and cosine. So for example, if we say that the cosine of theta is adjacent ax over hypotenuse a, that means that, well, us, we got to assume here, assume we're given the magnitude of vector a and the angle theta. Well, what we can do with that is we can rearrange this equation up here to write an expression for the magnitude of its horizontal component. We can use sine uh, opposite a y over a to write an expression for the magnitude of any vector's vertical component. Can I just do law signs? Yes, you can. This is the way I'll do it all year. This is the way that all physics people do it. Expand your mind, people. Uh, yeah, qualifier down here. Qualifier says, angles must be measured, measured from the horizontal in order for, well, notice, in order for the cosine to involve, well, the adjacent side to be horizontal. All right, so there are times when a horizontal component might involve sine, but that would be if the angle was measured up here. All right, but in this case, if we're measuring angles relative to the horizontal, this is how you calculate um, the uh, the horizontal or the the magnitude of the components of the vector. So you know the, what it boils down to is the sooner you can just get to this step. How do you find the x component? Hey, cosine theta. Are you a trained monkey? No, but you know, would it help you to just blindly be able to accept that and say it once you you know maybe a couple times run through the the actual definition wait a minute what's the cosine of theta equal you know eventually this should be second nature to you this should be second nature to you okay it doesn't not the worst thing in the world that y and sine sort of sound like each other a y is a sine theta right okay you'll use that just hundreds of times this year not, i kid you not examples why not an example is a cannonball is shot with a velocity of 75 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees above the horizontal. Find the horizontal and vertical components of the balls. I should really add the word uh, with that with a, with a initial velocity and the ball's initial velocity because the components of the velocity <clears throat> can change. But initially, that's how fast it's going. And initially, it's going um, point out, sure. Initially, it's going at that angle. Now, what we'd like to find are Vx and Vy. Um, how do you do it? Well, here's how you do it. Those are how you find the components of any vector. And so it doesn't matter if it's a, uh, what kind of vector it is, and velocity is a vector. So that means that we can use, um, instead of saying that the vector is just some any old vector A, this is a vector, what am I doing here? Group, group. This is a vector, I don't know, let's just call this V, right? V is 75 meters per second. So if we want Vx, we do V cosine theta which means that Vx is 75 times the cosine of 40, oops, point out, point out degrees. I'm trying to be consistent here with the number of sig figs. Sig figs don't matter as a, as a don't they, they're not going to affect your grade, but it would kill you to do your best. No, 75 cosine 40. 57.5 meters per second. 
Yes. It's okay. It's okay. Now, the y component, what do I do it for The y component, by, is b sine theta. And that means by is 75 meters per second. Sine of 40 degrees. 75 sine 48.2 meters per second. I like to put a box around my answers. It makes me feel good. It's okay? Go. Next. Yeah. Here's a harder one. We're going to do a vector addition problem, but we're going to do it using components. Here's two chains for all you... Never mind. <laughs> two chains attached to a stump to pull it out of the ground. Now... So really, right, we got a stump. We got a force A like this and a force B like that. What we want to do is find the total force, the resultant force. And to do that, we've talked about the necessity to, um, well, I'm going to move vector B out to the end here, right? And there's our, our uh, resultant force. So that's why this drawing over here looks like it does. Now, this is not just a Pythagorean theorem problem. Okay, because A and B are not perpendicular. So not every problem just works out so simply where you can just add two vectors using Pythagorean theorem and do some trick. But check this out. Well, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be... I'm going to do it better. Here are you. Line this. So there's a vector representing the result. Agreed? Uh, if I take, yeah, if I take that result, I'm just going to move it over here for a minute. Let's say the result looks like this. And notice that it has this. Um, F R X, and it has this F R Y. The resultant force has those two components. Well, check this out. Vector A has this X component. Vector B has this X component. Not A, B. Agree? Well, hopefully you can see that, look at this. AX and BX added tip to tail get you the resultant X. So what we can actually say is since the resultant force is equal to it should really be like F A and F force A and force B, but whatever. Since the resultant is the addition of those two vectors, it follows that F R X is the sum of the two X components. I'm such a spaz that I have to do this red to be consistent. F R X is A X plus B X. And check this out. Here's A, Y, and here's B, Y. And look, here's F, R, Y. Oh, yeah! It's the sum of A, Y, and B, Y. Coincidence? No. So F, R, Y is A, Y plus B, Y. Right, and so we could say, like, uh, right, uh, I mean, writing all this out, what a pain, but FRX, AX, A, cosine theta A. BX, B, cosine theta B. FRY 
is A sine theta A, and BY, B sine theta B. Now what you will do, I'm not going to write the numbers in because I don't want to, but you will, and you'll figure out that, um, actually I don't care if you write the numbers in or not, but A, X, A cosine theta A is 50 cosine 25. I'm going to pause, you have to listen to me calculate, and when I come back I'll have all these numbers in here. You should do the same. So I calculated the components of A and B. All right, so there's, here's AX, BX, AY, BY. And that means we can find the resultant X component and the resultant Y component. What I have not um, said yet, and this hopefully has not been a source of mass confusion, What's that? 50 north at 25 what? No, no, no. This means 50 newtons. Capitalized units are new units that are named after people. I guess there was a guy named Newton at some point. No, no, no. That's, that's a joke. Isaac Newton, you've heard of him. All right, so newtons is the metric unit of force. Pounds is the English unit. Okay, okay. Now, as you know, or as you can see, since we now know that this is 53.1 newtons, and this, and this is 47.4 newtons, we can now find the magnitude of that resultant, because these two components are perpendicular. So I will say, um, just sort of generally, that the magnitude of that resultant force is the sum of the square root of the sum of the squares. You know, use Pythagorean theorem. Oops, F. You can plug and chug, and we get up here. Seventy one point two. Yes? And this angle. I would do the inverse tangent. All right, I'm gonna say that theta is the inverse tangent in this K of the Y over the X. And that's uh, second tangent parentheses. Four, degrees above the horizontal. Now, the, the, the other way of doing this is use a ruler and a protractor and define a scale and be real careful to draw these vectors correctly. Draw them tip to tail and then just draw the resultant. And use your scale and figure out, you know, what that, what a vector that length must represent. And it'll be pretty darn close to 71.2 newtons. And then you use a protractor and you measure this angle. And yep, you're going to get 41.8-ish degrees. Um, but what I would recommend, actually what I require, is that you're comfortable using what we call a component approach. Defining the sum two vectors. Okay? Um, bing, 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 bing. couple of options, a couple of uh, examples for you. Don't do them yet. Um, we'll do these in class together. For those of you that are not my people, there's the answer. And here's the answer for the next one. Okay? Okay. Adiós.